Hi, welcome to the audio slide presentation. I'm Dr. Vishal Gyawali and today I'll discuss about our review published in March 2016 of Cancer Treatment Review Journal titled Chemotherapy in Locally Advanced Head and Neck Squamous Cell Carcinoma. Chemotherapy has an important role in the management of locally advanced head and neck cancer. In case of resectable tumors, the EORTC22931 and the RTOZ9501 trials studied whether the addition of cisplatin to radiotherapy provided added benefit over radiotherapy alone in the adjuvant setting. As can be seen from this table 1 of our review, the progression-free survival and the local regional relapse rates were significantly better with the addition of chemotherapy to radiotherapy. However, overall survival was not significantly improved in the RTOZ trial and chemoradiotherapy arm had significantly higher toxicities than radiotherapy alone now. A pooled analysis of these two trials and the 10-year updated results of the RTOZ later confirmed that the benefit of adding cisplatin to radiotherapy is limited only to patients at high risk of relapse and high risk defined as tumors with extracapsulary spread and resection margin positive. Hence, we recommend chemoradiotherapy as adjuvant treatment only in high risk patients. In undisectable disease, several phase 3 data and meta-analysis have established definitive concurrent cisplatin-based chemoradiation therapy as the standard of care. The TRAX-323 and 324 trials studied the role of chemotherapy as induction or neoadjuvant strategy and compared platinum plus 5FU PF induction versus taxane plus PF that is TPF induction. As can be seen from this table, the three drug induction therapy regime of TPF was better than PF induction across all the parameters but was also associated with significantly higher neutropenia and febrile neutropenia. However, the main criticism of these studies is that they compared two non-standard approaches. That is, instead of comparing induction chemotherapy versus definitive concomitant chemoradiation first, they compared simply three drug induction versus two drug induction therapy. The table 2 of our review includes data from the 2009 MATS meta-analysis where you can see that the addition of chemotherapy significantly improves survival but this benefit is significant only for concomitant chemoradiation and not for induction chemotherapy. The DECIDE and PARADIGM studies found that induction chemotherapy did not lead to any benefit but had added toxicity and was even lethal in some cases. Induction chemotherapy did not even control the distant failure rate in these studies. So, we conclude that definitive concomitant chemoradiation should remain the standard for undisectable locally advanced head and neck cancer. Induction chemotherapy, however, does have an important role in the setting of organ preservation with the BA and the EORTC trials in 90s showing no detriment in overall survival but impressive larynx preservation rates with the use of induction chemotherapy. Later, the GOTEC trial compared TPF versus PF induction therapy for larynx preservation and found impressive larynx preservation rates and overall response rates with the use of TPF induction. Long-term results of this study showed no difference in survival but better functional larynx preservation rates. So, induction chemotherapy has a role in patients who want to preserve their larynx. Finally, coming to Shatakshimab, the only phase 3 data comes from the Bonner trial which showed an impressive survival advantage with Shatakshimab plus radiation versus radiation alone. However, a few caveats apply to the interpretation of this study. One, the control arm is radiation therapy alone, which is not standard, as we already mentioned that the standard is definitive concomitant chemoradiation. 2. The radiotherapy used in this study was not uniform, rather there were 3 different options of radiotherapy. 3. Cetuximab radiation did not have any benefit in controlling distant metastasis, unlike concomitant chemoradiation. 4. Subgroup analysis showed greatest benefit for oropharyngeal cancers, while the benefit for cancer of other sites was limited. 5. EGFI status was not predictive of response and 6. Patients who developed rash to cetuximab had better outcomes. Except for patients in whom platinum is contraindicated, we prefer chemoradiation to cetuximab radiation because cetuximab has only one phase 3 data and it is extremely expensive compared to cisplatin. Further, penitumab, a drug similar to cetuximab, has provided consistently negative results in head and neck cancer. These are the highlights of our review. Thank you very much for listening to this audio slide presentation.